Well, I love the movies. Welcome to the biggest movie event of the year. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. And the Oscar goes and the Oscar to... Oscar goes to... Nicholson. Nick Ledger. Penelope Cruz. Curious case of Benjamin Button. The Dark Knight. Sean Penn. Mary Slumdog Millionaire. Thank you so much. Many times in the Bible, Jesus told a story to provide an illustration so that his hearers could understand a spiritual truth. And that's what we're trying to do with Victory in the Movies this morning. And the first clip that we are showing is a very, uh, it was a very current movie. And actually, Pastor Daniel is kind of bummed out that we're using this movie because he has a man crush on the character. He does, not just the guy who plays the character, but just the character. Ever since he was a little kid, he's like this character. All right, hey man, I'm, I'm throwing him under the bus there. But the movie character is Captain America. All right. All right, Captain America. And Captain America, he's an interesting guy, isn't he? I mean, he's like the ultimate soldier. You know, he's really fast. He's really strong. He's, uh, you know, real smart, and, and he's very loyal. But there's something else about Captain America that sets him apart is Captain America has this amazing shield, doesn't he? I mean, this shield is amazing. It's his best weapon. It's an offensive weapon and also a defensive weapon. You know, it stops bullets. You know, if a, guy, a bad guy tries to punch him, it blocks the punches. And, but one of the coolest things that Captain America does with his shield is that he throws this at bad guys. And, I mean, he just knocks them out when they get hit with the shield. And this shield is awesome. It never fails him. And so we're going to show a clip uh, after Captain America is chasing this bad guy. And we're going to see what happens. So it's a short clip. Now I told you it is a short clip. But here's Captain America, and he's throwing his shield. This is his best weapon. This is what he depends on, and he throws the shield, and the dude catches it. He catches it, and not only does he catch it, he throws it back to him. And you can look on the face of Captain America that he just can't believe that this just happened. I mean, he's just shocked. He, he, he doesn't understand how, this, how in the world did this just take place. And sometimes real life is like that, where we can do the best that we can and things just don't work out. We do the best that we can and they don't work out. We can go on that interview for that job that we really want and we can just kill that interview. I mean, we just smoke it. We do awesome in that interview, and we still don't get the job. We can be careful to stay in the budget of our finances. I mean, we have everything all worked out, and we're very careful, but still at the end of the month, there's not enough money to pay all the bills. We can study real hard, and I know some of the kids, you're going back to school tomorrow. Aren't you guys so excited? You know, you guys are going back to school. It's funny, at this time of year, the kids are like all depressed, man. So it looks like they've been, you know, sucking on lemons all day, and then the parents are like, it's like the best day of their life, you know? And, you know, you could study for a test, uh, whether you're in high school or maybe college or, or something else, uh, and you know the subject matter, and, uh, you know, you know you're going to get a good grade, but then you get it back, and you're just, like, looking at the grade, and you just can't believe it. Or you have faith in your prayers, uh, and you believe that God is going to save that loved one or that close friend, but then it seems like they are farther away from God than when you, before you first started praying for them. And things don't seem to work out. They don't make sense. It, it, it doesn't uh, it's figure out the way you planned it to be. And just like Captain America, this shield is supposed to, to knock the bad guys out. 
And it just, uh, it's never let him down. And that's the same way it happens in our life. You know, we plan these things out uh, and they don't work out the way we think they are. And I want to read a story in the Bible. It's about a group of people. And they're just trying to do what's right, this group of people. You know, God has told them to do something. And they do it exactly the way God tells them to do it. And it just blows up in their face. And we're going to read this story in the Bible. It's in the book of Judges. But before, I want to give you some background on this first. What happened was there was this guy and his wife ended up getting raped and murdered back in the book of Judges. This is back in Bible days. And they are in a town called uh, Gibea. And they are in this territory of the tribe of Benjamin. And this awful thing happens. It's in the nation of Israel. And so all the other tribes, uh, they want to, these men that, that did this terrible thing brought to justice. They want them to deliver, be delivered into their hands uh, so that they could take care of this situation. So they go to the tribe of Benjamin and they say, you know, tell us who these guys that did this terrible thing are. Who are they? We want to bring them to justice. But Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, instead of turning these guys over, they prepare for war. So Israel prepares for war also. They have 400,000 troops. And Benjamin only has 26,000 soldiers. That's not good odds, is it? And the tribes of Israel... They go to God in prayer and they go, God, you know, is this what you want us to do? And, uh, you know, who should go up first to, to fight against Benjamin? You know, what should we do in this situation? And God answers them and tells them what to do. And then we're going to read about the results of what happened. And Judges chapter 20, verse 18 and through 21, it says, Now the sons of Israel rose, they went up to Bethel and inquired of, the, of, of God and said, Who shall go up first for us to the battle against the sons of Benjamin? Then the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. So the sons of Israel rose in the morning and camped at uh, uh, Gibeah. Then the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin, and the men of Israel arrayed for battle against them at Gibeah. Then the sons of Benjamin came out of Gibeah and felted to the ground on that day 22,000 men of Israel. Now think about this. This is crazy. This, these men had raped and murdered a woman. And the tribes of Israel, they are just trying to do right they even prayed to God. They said, God, you know, do you want us to do this? Uh, you know, who's the, who's the tribe that shall go up first? And God answers them and, and tells them what to do. And they go to battle and they lose 22,000 soldiers. This is devastating. They are just trying to do the right thing. They had prayed, and it's a disaster, and 22,000 men perish. This doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't seem right. You know, we're just doing the right thing. We prayed, and this happens. And see, let me tell you this morning, from time to time, this can happen to any of us. We're doing what's right. We are prayed up, and sometimes things just blow up in our faces. Sometimes we get fired from a job, and there's no real reason. We just come into work one day, and we're fired. Sometimes a relationship explodes, and for the life of you, you cannot figure out why. Why? And I remember one time, this is before I was a pastor, and I was one of the main leaders uh, in, this, in this church, and I was involved in all these different ministries, and, and you know, I was just serving God, and I was pulled from all leadership, and I hadn't done anything wrong. I mean, nothing. You know, the pastor even said, there's nothing you've done wrong, I'm just pulling you from everything. And I'm like, What? 
What's going on? And this can be really hard on us uh, as men and women of God uh, when things don't work out the way we think they're going to work out. It can crush us. It can, you know, bring us very low. It's like Captain America, how he, how he must have felt. I mean, he, it's a shield, man. That's a cool shield. He throws that thing, and the guy just catches it. It's just like, boom. He catches it. And how do you feel the tribes of Israel felt when they lost 22,000 soldiers? It just does not make sense. And many of us, it can happen to us in different ways. Because we live real life. Don't we real, live real life? You know, we're not living some fake life. I mean, this is real life. And sometimes different ways this takes place. First off, when we fail at something, when we think we did everything right, failure is a hard thing for us to take, isn't it? I don't care how strong your personality is or how confident you are in yourself. When you fail, it's hard at anything. It's hard. None of us likes to fail at anything, especially it's very damaging when we feel like we had everything worked out. Like we had everything wired, we were prayed up, we were prepared, we were doing the right thing, and it, we just utterly fail. It's a hard thing to fail. You know, I remember when I was pastoring my first church in Los Angeles, California. You know, here it is, I'm a brand new pastor. And, um, you know, it's my first church. And not only was I the preacher, but I was also the song leader, okay? We had nobody else that could lead songs, and so I was leading songs. And, and we had, God helped us, man. You know, in a short time, we had about 25, 30 people, and, and the church was going good, and I remember this, the one service, I'm all excited, you know, I'm prayed up, I'm believing God, we're going to just have this awesome service, and so I'm going to lead the people in worshiping God, I'm going to be the song leader, and I'm going to lead them into, you know, the presence of God, and, and we're singing this old song, now most of you probably never heard of this song, unless you've been a Christian a long, long time, but it's an old song that we used to sing, and it kind of goes like this. It's, uh, it's called Praise the Name of Jesus, and it's Praise the Name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. You know, that's what you guys are clapping and everything, man. Yeah. See, I, I still got it. I can still sing, man. I still got it. So we're singing this song, man. It's the presence of God is there, and we're singing it. And as I'm leading this song, I got the words mixed up. Now, when you're leading a song and you mix the words up, it can be really disastrous. But this time was extra direct disastrous. Because I'm singing this song, and I, I said, Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fart. <laughs> did, did, did I just call, say Jesus is my fart? I did. I said that. I, I'm leading songs and I said that. And when you're standing up here leading songs, there's nowhere to hide, man. You know, you can't fit in the pulpit. You know, there's no, nothing you can do. And I said that. And I, I failed, man. I wanted to hide. The worst thing is I had to finish the song service, and then I had to preach after that. It was terrible. See, I thought I had everything wired. I was all prayed up. I was excited, but I had failed. And failure can happen to any of us, no matter how well prepared you are. You could be the best employee in the world, in the company, and they could still fire you tomorrow. They could. 
You could be the most caring friend that that person ever knew, and they could still stab you in the back for no apparent reason. Happens all the time. You could be the ultimate prayer warrior and bombard the heavens with your prayers and still not receive the results that you want to see. Why? Because failure happens to all of us, no matter how well prepared, how prayed up we are, or how humble we are. Failure happens to all of us. And so the key to this is that we need to know how to respond to failure. Captain America, when that guy caught his shield... He didn't stop saying, oh, he cut my shield. Now I'm just going to quit and go home and hang out with the Hulk, you know. No, he just kept going after the guy. He kept going after and chasing the guy. The Bible tells us what the tribes of Israel did. In verse 22 through 24 of Judges, chapter 20, it says, But the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves. And arrayed for battle again in the place where they had arrayed themselves on the first day. The sons of Israel went up and went before the Lord until evening. Inquired the Lord, saying, Shall we again draw near the battle against the sons of my brother Benjamin? And the Lord said, Go up against him. Then the sons of Israel came against the sons of Benjamin the second day. You know what they said? They said, you know what? We lost 20,000 men yesterday. We utterly failed. You know, it did not go well. It was a disaster. But we're going to do it again. That's why we need to understand that when we fail, it's not the end. When I messed up that song service miserably, the next week I stood up there and led songs. But you know what? I never sang that song again. I think that's the first time I sang it since then. I I was smart enough not to sing it again. Why take a chance? So if you get fired from that job, you know what you do? Go get another one. Right? If that friend stabs you in the back, go get another friend. If those prayers don't seem to be working today, keep praying because maybe a miracle will happen tomorrow. Failure is not the end of the story. Failure is just one of the chapters. You know, when you read a book, there's chapters in the book. And maybe something bad happens in one of the chapters, but then it all works out at the end. It's the same way in our life. Maybe one of the chapters you're going through right now in your life is failure. But that's not the end of the book. That's why you got to keep moving forward when things don't work out the first time. When we fail, it's not the end. It's just a part of the process. It's a part of the process. You guys still with me? Second thing that happens to us is we are shocked when people attack us or things come against us. A lot of Christians have this twisted idea that, you know, we're Christians and we do good and we help people and we're really nice and everything. And so, you know, everyone should love us. We should be the most respected and admired people in the community. And when that doesn't happen, we are surprised. Why are people attacking us? Why why is that happening? Well, look at this verse. This This is a verse we probably don't like that's in the Bible, but it is. In John 15, verse 18 and 19, it says, If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. Think about that. That's strong words. The Bible's telling us the world will hate us. They hated Jesus, and they will hate us. See, there's this big push in Christian circles today that the church should just be worried about having a good image in the community. You know? 
Oh, that's Victory Christian Center. We love them. They are so nice. We just love them. Well, as the leader of this church, my goal, my main goal is not to, to have a you know, good name in the community. My goal is to do the will of the Father. That's what all of our goals should be, to do the will of the Father. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes the community will love you, and other times the community will hate you because you are doing the will of the Father. Just like Jesus was hated. I mean, think about this. Jesus is perfect, right? He's perfect. He never sinned even once. He never hurt anybody. He just came to love people and to give his life for them and, and, you know, feed them and heal them and do all these awesome things. And they hated him. They ended up killing him. All he did was the Father's will. And there are times as a church and as an individual people where you will be hated for what you stand for. You'll be hated. And we can't be shocked when this happens. Like, what's going on? Why don't they like me? It's because they don't like Jesus. You know, in the movie Captain America and the rest of the movie, Captain America found out that the bad guy, the Winter Soldier, what a crazy name for a guy, but he found out that it was his old friend, and he was shocked. Like, that's my old friend. The children of Israel were shocked when Benjamin went to war instead of just handing over the murderers. And a lot of Christians get shocked when people don't like them. We need to do right regardless of what people think of us. It doesn't matter what people think. We just need to do the will of the Father. We just need to do what God's called us to do and not worry about what people think. Let the chips fall where they may. Regardless of the outcome. And even though the Winter Soldier caught Captain America's shield, Captain America kept on fighting and chasing him and eventually prevailed. The tribes of Israel, they did not stop. Not only did they fail once and lost 22,000 men on the first day, I'm not going to read it, but on the second day they went to battle again and lost 18,000 men, 40,000 men in two days. But you know what? They kept on fighting, and look what happened, verse 26 through 28. Then all the sons of Israel and all the people went up and came to Bethel and wept. Thus they remained there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. The sons of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant was with uh, God. Uh, of God was with them those days. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, Aaron's son, stood before it to minister in those days, saying, "Shall I yet go?" A- out again to battle against the sons of my brother Benjamin, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into your hand. And that's exactly what happened. On the third day, they won the battle. First day, 22,000 men. Second day, 18,000 men. Gone. But on the third day, they kept fighting. They kept doing what God wanted them to do, and they prevailed. And God gave them the victory. And sometimes the difference in your life between winning and losing is you just not quitting. We quit so easily. Oh, it's hard. Stop being a little weenie. Come on. It's, it, life is hard. It is hard. But if you quit, uh, you will never see victory. You've got to just keep fighting. Don't quit sometimes uh, when things don't work out the first time. God is trying to see where your heart's at. You know, I love the story about Thomas Edison. You know, Thomas Edison was an amazing man. He was uh, probably the greatest inventor of all times. And when he was developing the light bulb, he failed 10,000 times. Actually, 
around the 10,000th time, he finally found the answer. But can you imagine, you know, he failed a hundred times, a thousand, five thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand. He's just failing, trying to make the light bulb work, and it won't. He just keeps failing and failing and failing, but he just keeps going and fighting and figuring it out. And he finally found the answer around the ten thousand times. But thank God we, he did that because now we got lights, you know. We'd be in here with candles, you know. Because here's a guy who didn't, he didn't give up. And see, folks, we need to keep fighting. We need to keep working at it. Just because it doesn't work out the first time, just because you failed last week, doesn't mean you're going to fail this week. We need to keep doing what God's called us to do. I'd like you to bow your heads uh, this morning. If you could bow your heads.